The plumbing sector has experienced an explosive rise in apprentices since the onset of the coronavirus pandemic due to its necessary nature and experience-based income. But what we do also tend to forget is that plumbing can be interesting. And to prove this, let's look at how plumbers across the globe make water parks work. Because without them, we'd have no water. The physics behind the idea of a water slide. Before jumping into the question of how the plumbing system of a large park works, we think it's important to first discuss the physics behind the contraptions we enjoy there. Plumbers do, after all, have to defy and work alongside these natural laws while setting up the systems we're about to discuss. The law of gravity, for example, which describes the force of attraction that the Earth has on us, and vice versa, is something that needs to be in the mind of a plumber at all times when setting up a working water park system. Another is friction, which is considered to be the stopping force that one encounters when rubbing one surface against another. Remember, to be able to zip down a water Water slide, it has to be angled in such a way that gravity can be used to increase your speed and make the ride, well, enjoyable. At the same time, friction needs to be reduced as much as possible, as otherwise you'd simply get stuck to the slide and have a pretty painful butt or back. This is why water is so important when it comes to the full enjoyment of a water park. Without water, to reduce the friction between you and the winding slide, you could get stuck at any moment to the fiberglass surface. But this means that the water has to be pumped up to the top of the slide each and every time with enough power to defy the force of gravity. And since water is being used the whole day, it makes sense that there would have to be some or other recyclable element. As otherwise, we assume that water parks would be out of business due to the insane water bills that they would receive from just a month of running. And as it turns out, this is exactly right. So let's dive right into the functioning of this system that makes the zipping down a water slide so incredibly fun. It's all in the pump. Before the discovery of electricity and invention of means to generate it, employees at the water park would have to had collect water at the base of the slide and walk up to the top each and every time the visitor requested a ride. And since this would be an unbelievable feat of strength that would tire attendance out in just a few minutes, it makes sense that the water parks didn't exist prior to the technological era. With the invention of a pump, which has the ability to drive water against the force of gravity, the idea of a water park was no longer considered to be, well, a crazy one. In fact, the idea was highly workable, but plumbers had to find a way to ensure that pumps like the stayed as far away from the water that they drive. Remember, these pumps are powered by electricity and, as it turns out, water and electricity don't mix very well. This is why water slide pumps are often housed in waterproof casings, with the majority of them even being hidden away in small enclosures just beside the water slides that they power. The standard design of a pump used to power a water slide is pretty simple if you think about it. The pump motor, which is the portion powered by electricity, turns the drive shaft of the pump once switched on. The drive shaft, in turn, is attached to a propeller of sorts, which when powered up, rotates at incredible speeds and pushes the water in question up to the top of the slide. This is very similar to how an airplane propeller pushes air particles forward, except in this case, we're clearly dealing with water particles. Despite the speed at which the water is forced upwards, it's slowed by gravity on the way, which results in it flowing gently from an opening at the top of the slide, making for a gentle ride to the bottom. But where does the pump get the water from in the first place? Well, more often than not, the pump draws this water from a large collection sump, which is usually in the form of a pool at the very bottom of the slide. As it turns out, this pool is not just necessary to save you from a painful crash after sliding down the water slide, it also serves as a reservoir for the pump, creating a closed system that is in constant state of movement until switched off. This means that the water used to eradicate the friction of the water slide is collected in the same pool from which it's drawn, making the system one that is recycling water at a constant rate. And when this water evaporates, more is added to the pool, which usually has a level indicator below which the water should never be. This is the simplest of systems that can be found at your local water park, but isn't always the case. In some parks, the water in question is actually cycled through a few pools and filters before it's actually pumped back to the top of the slide. And considering how many children have a tendency to release their bladders in pools, this is probably, you know, a good thing. The piping system that allows for this to happen. As any plumber will tell you though, a pump cannot work without an adequate piping system. It's through pipes that the water is both pumped to the top of the slide and collected from the sump after all. In a typical setup, we find a pipe leading from the collection pool to a larger container, often filled with sand that sits on top of a small layer of gravel. This is commonly referred to as a filtration system, as when water is pumped from the top of the container to the bottom, the fine sand particles travel 
grab any dirt that has been carried through from the pool. To ensure that the system doesn't become blocked, plumbers need to make use of a pump that has reverse function. This allows managers at the park to reverse the flow of water and dislodge the bits of dirt that were trapped in the buildup of the day. Another pipe then leads from the filtration chamber to the top of the slide, but more often than not, this pipe is stopped by a one-way valve which is positioned between the pump and the point where this piping starts to defy gravity. Since water can only move in one direction past this point, the pipe will always be full of water, regardless of whether the pump has been switched on or not. The reason for this inclusion of the one-way valve is pretty simple. Since the pipe is always full, switching the pump on in the morning will show an immediate flow of water, allowing for visitors to get to sliding as soon as possible. If this wasn't the case, visitors to the park would have to wait ages for the water to make its way up to the pipe and continue its recyclable journey throughout the day. You'd also be surprised at the sheer size of these piping systems, especially when dealing with large water parks. As we mentioned earlier, the pump that drives this system is often housed away from the water it gives life to. It can't be kept completely underground as at some point or another, maintenance will have to be done. In fact, the majority of water parks have to maintain their systems quite often in an attempt to ensure that everything is as safe as possible. This is why these pumps can often be found in enclosed areas that can be reached easily with more than enough space to work on the pump if need be. As such, piping needs to connect to the pump once more to the system without which nothing would work. The Workings of the Water Coaster Water parks have truly advanced over the years though and often rely on high intensity water coasters over and above the water slides we all grew up with. These contraptions work on a similar system to water slides, although the biggest difference present is that the water is actually being pumped at a greater rate. It's the pressure of the water that speeds you along the water coaster after all, which is obviously different from the concept of a water slide that relies on gravity to speed its riders along. Another difference in the system that drives a water coaster is the presence of a number of points at which high pressure water escapes and forces you along. These slots are often set up along the coaster where gravity needs to be defied a bit. So as as you can imagine, the pumps used to drive such rides often need to be a lot larger than those found powering water slides. And since plumbers are not only needed to design, install, and maintain these systems, it goes without saying that the job is an interesting one at that. If you're already a plumber running your own business or just about to start and grow your own plumbing business, you must learn the four critical things plumbing business owners wish they had learned before starting a plumbing business so you don't make the same mistakes. Plumber Accelerator has put together a free training video you can watch right now now that will show you exactly how to start, grow, and build your plumbing business the right way so you can consistently guarantee profitable work and free up your time, all while reducing stress levels and allowing you to have a sustainable and more profitable business that works for you. In this free training video, you'll also learn how to generate a steady stream of jobs on demand and with predictability month after month in your local area without relying on word of mouth referrals, how to stop competing on price with other plumbers and escape your competition, how to convert at least 90% of your quotes and estimates into sales, and how to command premium prices and attract high quality customers that will make you happy to pay more. Make sure to click the link in the description below. Thanks for watching everybody, we'll catch you on the next one.